morning, good morning. God bless you. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. Come on in. You ought to declare that over your Good morning, Shante. God bless you. Welcome. Happy Monday. Good morning. Good morning. Come on in. Good morning, Mama Norma. Good morning, Cousin Lisa. God bless you guys. Happy Monday. Come on in, everybody. Happy Monday. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Bridget. God bless you. Come on in. God bless you to those that are on the phone line this morning. Good morning. God bless you. Yeah, he said, I'm running into destiny. How many of you are running into destiny this morning? There's nothing holding you back. You are running forward. You are pressing forward. Amen. Good morning, Minister Tammy. God bless you. Good morning, Regina, Mitzi. God bless you, Melanie. Good morning, good morning. I'm looking at two different devices, y'all, because the comments don't come up on one, but we're going to work this thing on out. Yes, good morning, Gwen. God bless you, Valerie. God bless you. Mm. I know I want God to just blow my mind. I don't know about you, but I want God to blow my mind. God, just blow my mind. Yes, I know it's going to be big. Because we serve a big God. We serve an unlimited God. Amen. Good morning, Sonya. God bless you. God bless you. Good morning. Mm, my promise is big. My new job is big. My future is big. Yes. Just put in the timeline, God blow my mind. Just type it in the timeline. God blow my mind. <laughs> yes. Good morning, Miss Regina. God bless you. Welcome. Happy Monday, everybody. Yes, yes. Good morning, good morning, good morning. God bless you. I tell you, it is going to be big. God is going to blow your mind. Amen. And so we are grateful this morning for this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, Jackie. God bless you. God bless you. Not sure if your sister Diana is with you, but good morning. Good morning. Listen, God is so faithful. He's so good. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to everyone. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Evangelist Charlotte. God bless you. Good morning, Jessica. God bless you. God bless you. And so we know that God is about to blow our minds. I pray that everyone had a wonderful Mother's Day on yesterday whether you were spending time alone, right? <laughs> or whether you were with your children, um, I pray that you had a wonderful, wonderful Mother's Day. So we're going to go ahead and get started this morning, God. We just thank you, Lord God. We thank you for another day, another chance, oh God. We thank you for brand new mercy, oh God. Father God, as you release your word to your the people on this morning, oh God, I pray a blessing over the word, oh God. I pray that it takes root, oh God, and that it's planted, oh God, and that it produces a harvest in each of our lives, oh God. Lord, decrease me and increase you as your word goes forth in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Good morning, Lady Kim. God bless you. God bless you. Good morning. And so, um, 
on today, God placed on my heart as I was asking him, what, are we, what am I talking about this morning, God? What do you want your daughters to know? And that's normally how we started off. And, and that's how I get a word is, God, okay, what do you want your daughters to know? How do you want me to encourage your daughters? What do you want them, uh, uh, what do you want to speak through me on um, in the morning? And that's how I get the word. And so he took me back um, because there's times when uh, he just give me a word or he'll give me a phrase or a sentence and I'll write it down. Um, and I might not go back to it right away, but he took me back to um, a word or a, a, a analogy or whatever you want to call it that um, he gave me, gave me months ago, months ago. And um, it's entitled SWOT analysis, SWOT analysis. Good morning, Crystal. And so for those of you, um, um, I know, um, if, you know, working in an organization, um, I learned about this when I was going to college and um, it was a SWOT analysis. And I know a few weeks ago we talked about KPIs and it kind of goes hand in hand with our KPIs. And so um, what the, uh, the, um, Acronym SWAT means is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And so in school, um, going to business, when I was getting my master's in business, um, we would always have to do, uh, and Shalanda can attest to this because we did it together, um, we got our degrees together, is that... Uh, we, we always had to do a SWOT analysis on different businesses, right? Um, and even when we had to come up with our own project and our own business or what have you, we had to do what's called a SWOT analysis. And so the Lord began to speak to me and he says, when was the last time you did a SWOT analysis on your own life? I said, oh my God, my God, wait a minute, Lord, what you talking about now, right? And so uh, uh, this was a, a word of correction, a word, a word of awareness, my God, a word of awareness. And so he was like, when was the last time that you looked at your own strengths, that you looked at your own weaknesses, that you looked at your own opportunities, that you looked at your own threats? He says, even in your situations that you're going through and the different circumstances that you're in and the different environments that you're in, on each one of those uh, uh, areas of your life, you can do a SWOT analysis. I said, oh, okay. He says, you can do a SWOT analysis in your finances. You can do a SWOT analysis in your relationships. Come on now, which relationships are, 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 are serving as strength or as a weakness or as an opportunity or as a threat? Oh my God. He said you can do a, a SWOT analysis on your spiritual life. Okay, God. All right, God. I, I hear you talking, right? I hear you talking. And so this morning we're going to be coming from Galatians 6 and 4. Um, and the Amplified reads as, but each one must carefully scrutinize his own work, examining his actions, attitudes, and behavior. And then he can have the personal satisfaction and inner joy of doing something commendable without comparing himself to another. Amen. And so we know that, you know, companies do this SWOT analysis. They use this tool um, and it really assists them in determining a strategy to gain a better idea or, of the condition or the potential condition of their company. And so again, this tool can be uh, also used to assist us in determining our spiritual condition. My God, our spiritual condition. Good morning, Michelle. God bless you. And so, so when we begin, we begin with strengths. And what are our strengths? And so by definition, excuse me, by definition of SWAT for strengths, strengths are based on internal factors and viewed as helpful to your organization. And so what are your competitive advantages? So this morning, the question is, what are your strengths? What tools are you using to fight with? When you're depressed, what tools are you using to fight with? When you have anxiety coming up in you, in you because there's a work to be done or there's something that needs to be done or the situation you're in is causing you to have anxiety, what tools are you using to fight? My God, good morning, Tonisha. What gives you the advantage when trials are coming your way? And so Philippians 1 and 6 says, I am convinced and confident 
of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will continue to perfect and complete it until the day of Jesus Christ, the time of his return. So what, what strength are you using this morning to fight with? I know for me, I have the Holy Spirit on my side and I'm so glad that I can call upon the Holy Spirit in, uh, in times of need. That is my number one strength. My strength is being able to get on my knees and pray about the situation. That is my strength. My strength is being able to say, you know what? I need to push away my plate on today. I need to push away the food on today and I need to fast today about the situation. I need to fast to get in order to get closer to God. I need to empty myself of the natural thing so that I can fill myself up with the spiritual thing. What are your strengths on today? And that's very important for you to understand and realize what your strengths are. Because when the battles come, when the fight comes, when the opposition comes, you need to understand what your strengths are. If you don't know, uh, my God, you know, when you get into a fight, you have a, there, there are certain uh, uh, techniques and things that people do when they fight, right? You know, when they're, when you're in a boxing ring, there are certain things that boxers do. Like this boxer might have a good right arm or he might have a good left jab, right? Or he might have a good um, under uh, uh, undercut or uppercut, whatever you want to call it, right? And so you have to understand what your strength is when you get into the fight. Because if you don't know what your strength is when you get into the fight, oh my God, that's when the knockout comes. I I don't know what tools to use in this fight. So if I don't know what tools to use in my fight, that's when I'm going to be knocked down to my to my knees. That's when I'm going to be knocked out. That's when the enemy is going to take control over me and over the situation because I don't even know what strengths I have in the fight. My God, my God. And so we got to understand and we have to recognize and, and figure out how do we maximize our strengths. How do we maximize the strengths that we have so when we're in the fight, we can use those tools? And then there's weaknesses. There's our weaknesses. And we all have weaknesses. None of us is perfect. None of us uh, 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 are, are able to just go through life without, you know, just only using our strengths and never being at a weak point. We all get to a weak point. David got to uh, several weak points where he had to call out on God. He had to call out and say, my God, you know, where he needed the help of the Lord. And so Matthew 26 and 41 says, keep watch and pray that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. Amen. And so I can attest to that. I can attest to falling into temptation. I can attest to my flesh being weak. Come on, somebody. Do I need to go to when to when, when we when we got that boyfriend and we trying to get rid of that boyfriend? And as soon as he called and we know we just told him, uh-uh, you ain't coming over tonight. You ain't coming over today. I'm not finna, I'm not about to see you. But as soon as he called and we hear that voice on the phone, my God, our flesh just begin to get weak. I don't know about you, but I'm being real with this thing this morning, right? We all have that weak, uh, that, that our flesh is weak when we, we, we know we can't shop that day, but we see that cute outfit come across our email and our flesh gets weak and we go out and we look at it and we end up buying it, right? Our flesh gets weak at times and we fall into temptation. And so weaknesses are based on internal factors and they're viewed as harmful. And so what weaknesses do you have this morning that's holding you back? Is he a weakness? Is that is your friendship? Girl, come on, let's go out and let's go kick it. Is that a weakness? Well, because I'm bored and because I'm lonely, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go out and kick it. Even though I know I don't need to go in that environment, I'm going to do it anyway. What is your weakness this morning? Good morning, Pastor Zakiba. Good morning, Sierra. What is some of the weaknesses that are holding you back from being obedient to God? God, you, I know you told me not to go there and not to do this, but my flesh is weak. And so what are your weaknesses this morning? What aspects are currently uh, uh, of your current situation is holding you back from the blessing that God has for you? And how can you minimize your weaknesses? 
How can you minimize your weaknesses? I know my daughter called me last week and she was like, mama, you know, she was telling me about the weakness she was having. And she was like, I just don't know. Girl, I said, go get in your word. You need to go pray. See, at the times that our flesh is weak, that's when we got to say, okay, now I need to go and pull on the strengths that I have. Let me go back and let me remember the, the strengths that I have, the praying, the fasting or whatever your strengths are. Let me go pull on that. Maybe I need to go in and, and, and teach a Bible study class. Maybe I need to go and study my word and teach it to somebody, right? Maybe I need to go talk to a friend who uh, who is uh, has a lot more faith than I, do, than I do so that I can get my strength, right? And so when we, in the times that our flesh is, is, is succumbing to the weakness we must know what our strengths are so that we can go and we can pull onto our strengths. Amen. And then after we identify our strengths, we've identified our weaknesses, then we can move on to the O, which is the opportunities. The opportunities. And so the opportunities are based on external factors and they're viewed as helpful. These are our opportunities, right? And so Matthew 9 36 through 38 says, when he saw the crowds, he was moved with compassion and pity for them because they were dispirited and distressed like sheep without a shepherd. But we know that the Lord is our shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is indeed plentiful, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his. And so those are opportunities for us, right? And so what are our opportunities? And so some of the opportunities we have is to grow spiritually. That's one of the biggest opportunities that we have is to grow spiritually, right? And so we can think about what additional duties we can participate in. And like I said before, sometimes our flesh is weak and the only way to get back stronger, the only way to fill ourselves up is to maybe go and study the word of God and then maybe go teach the word of God. Maybe go have a little Bible study. Maybe you and a friend can talk about the Lord and the goodness of the Lord, right? And so um, there's opportunities for us to encourage one another. Even there's times where I'm weak, but by me encouraging my sister, that's going to help me become strengthened, right? That's going to help me, right? And so it's important that we understand what our opportunities are, right? What about doing additional Bible studies? Uh, what about opportunities to serve? Maybe I need to be out there serving the homeless. I need to go out there and feed the homeless, right? We need to recognize what our opportunities are, okay? And so, and how can we capitalize on our opportunities? Take advantage of these opportunities. Just because I'm going through doesn't mean there aren't opportunities for me. Just because I'm going through doesn't mean I need to sit and I need to wallow and I need to stay in my ashes. Come on. He says he'll turn our, 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 our ashes into beauty. And so we got to make sure that we capitalize on these opportunities. Knowing what these opportunities are will help us get over some of the things that we're in. Going to serve will help us get out of the funk that we're in some of us are in a real bad funk right now some of us are in a in, in some bad situations that we feel like that, that we're we're not able to get over because we haven't recognized the opportunities to serve serving will allow us to help us get out of the situations that we are in mm, thank you holy ghost and so the last uh part of the SWOT analysis is threats the last part is threats. I already my Wednesday message. That's so funny. Come on, Mr. Shalonda. The last part is threats. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time on threats. And so threats are based on external factors and are viewed as harmful to your organization. And so let's turn this thing around. Threats are based on external factors and is viewed as harmful to our bodies to our situations, to our circumstances, to our spiritual life, to our financial life, to our marriage, my God, to our families, my God. And so how can your weakness create a threat in your objective? Because see, we allow our weaknesses to take root 
If we allow our weaknesses to take hold of our lives, then it's going to eventually turn into a threat because we're allowing that external thing to affect our lives, right? And so if we allow our weakness to control us, uh, 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 then we allow the enemy to go ahead and move in, right? And so we know that the Bible says that the thief comes in to steal, kill, and destroy. So that weakness will take root and turn into a threat so that the enemy can come in and steal our joy and kill off our peace and destroy our life and destroy our minds, right? And so we got to understand, okay, when the enemy is coming in and that threat is coming, that's when we pull our strengths. That's when we pull on to our opportunities. And so Ephesians 2 verse 1 through 3, it says that as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. Mm. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh, come on, and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. And so the uh, uh, Ephesians 2, 1 through 3 describes three different threats to the believer. It, the first threat is the world system. The world system, not the people that's in it, but the world system. My God, he says, you follow the ways of the world. So remember, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. And so if we decide that we want to be of the world and we start taking on the world system, my God, that is a threat. The second uh, is the flesh. And we talked about this, how our flesh get weak. We let uh, Jojo, Mr. Jojo Clown Boy come in because our flesh is weak. Week. When we heard, we told him no, but when we heard his voice, we was, he, 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 okay, well, come on. <laughs> right? The flesh gets weak. We know we need to push back the plate, but because the food was so good, our flesh is so weak. We continue to eat. When God said, uh-uh, I told you to fast today. I told you to push away the plate today. I told you not to overindulge in this thing, right? But we, our flesh gets weak and we overindulge in things and in, in shopping, right? We overindulge in drinking. We overindulge in drugs. Come on now, which leads to different addictions my god and so we have to be careful not to allow our flesh to become a threat to us and then the third threat was the enemy the devil and so the believer must always be on the lookout of how these three things might manifest themselves in our lives we have to be careful we got to be careful we got to understand and be able to recognize when the threats come up in our lives right and so one of the reasons why the threats come up in our lives because it could be a lack of growth. It can be a lack of growth. Mark 4, 19 through 20 says, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth and the desires of other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Others like seeds sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it and produce a crop. Some 30, some 60, some a hundred times what was sown. And I had um, put up a post, I think it was last week, uh, that you, you you can't sow five seeds and expect a 500 acre uh, 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 um, harvest. It just don't work out that way, right? Uh, we have to sow 500 seeds in order to get a 500 uh, acre uh, uh, harvest. But at the end of the day, God gives us the increase. He's the one that's going to give us the increase and he's the one that can multiply that thing. And so literally those threats could be your friends. They can be the uh, the influences that are around you. And so we have to understand, do we believe in the word of God and the promises of heaven that awaits us if we are obedient? And so what level of desire do you do uh, desire to serve God? Do you really have? Do you really have? And so when those threats end, do you have that level of desire to serve God wholeheartedly to where you can pull on your strengths? 
and you can pull on your opportunities to combat those um those uh threats and the and the weaknesses that you have in your life. But until you identify those things, see, sometimes you can't get past what you're going through because you haven't identified it, right? You know, when you go, um, I, well, you know, I watched on TV or heard or whatever, like when you go to Alcohol Anonymous or whatever it's called to your AA meetings of the thing that they say is, you know, how my name is, uh, you know, such and such and I'm an alcoholic. Right? You have to identify that thing first. If you haven't identified it and if you haven't realized exactly what it is in your life that's holding you back, then how can you combat that thing? How can you combat that? How can you use your strength? How can you pray against that thing? How can you fast against that thing? How can you do that? How can you go into your word and ask the Lord to give you the scriptures to speak over that thing if you have not first realized what that thing is that's holding you back and holding you down and holding you hostage? Pastor Didi talked about bondage last week. How can you even begin to get over it and, and, and speak against it and decree and declare against that thing if you haven't even recognized what that thing is that's holding you back. Mm. that's why it's so helpful for us to go and seek counsel and to go to counselors because they can help you bring that thing up and identify that thing that's coming up in your from your childhood or in your past. Mm. So you can finally get over that thing. Amen. And so we have, to, uh, we have to really realize and figure out how we can reduce the threats that are in our lives. And so literally when you're doing that SWOT analysis, the planning of it, yeah, it can be easy. It can be easy sometimes. Identifying the different things maybe or trying to identify it or having somebody help you identify these things, these things. But where the difficulty comes in is in the execution. It's in the execution. It's in the how am I going to do this and how am I going to do that? It's in the, the discipline. And the obedience. It's in the discipline and the obedience. If God said, I want you to fast every single week on Wednesdays, it's in the discipline and it's in the obedience. If God says, I want you to go and you need to attend church and Bible study every single Sunday and Wednesday, it's in the discipline and it's in the obedience. If God says, I need you to go give this girl a word or this guy a word, it's in the discipline and in the obedience. It's in the execution. If God says, I want you to go open up the business. I want you to go and plant the ministry. My God, I want you to write the book. I want you to, to go and give a thousand dollars and sow a seed, even though you don't have it in your bank account. I want you to do this. It's in your discipline and in your obedience. My God, my God. And so we need to prepare ourselves to grow and to, uh, and to protect us from the snares of the devil. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. And so we have to remember that. And we can do this. How do we do this? By putting on the full armor of God. By putting on the full armor of God and evaluating the condition of the armor on a regular basis. That was so good to me because we don't always evaluate the condition of our armor. Mm. If there's a crack in your armor, that crack is spiritual weakness, spiritual weakness. And we must fix the crack. We must fix the crack. We must fix the the trust. We must fix the peace. We must fix these things. And the only way we can fix it is through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the only way that we can fix the cracks. That's the only way that we're able to fix the cracks in the armor. Amen. And so that was so good doing that SWOT analysis and understanding the conditions that we're in, understanding how we're able to go in and identify our strengths, identify our weaknesses, identify our opportunities and identify our threats in our lives and in our current situations. 
So put on the full armor of God. Amen. And so we're going to pray this morning. We are going to pray this morning that God just really allows us to identify, recognize, and, and put in those measures to combat all of the threats and all of the weaknesses that we identified in our lives so that we're able to put on the full armor of God and so that we're able to fight against the wiles of the devil. Amen. And so most gracious Father God, we just thank you on this morning, oh God. We praise you for who you are, Lord God. I thank you for each and every woman on here under the sound of my voice, oh God. Lord, I pray now that you first of all just forgive us for not walking in obedience and not walking in discipline when it comes to your word, oh God. When it came to the thing that you told us to do, oh God, when we're stuck and we, we're wandering in our wilderness and we don't understand why we're still in our wilderness, oh God, it's because of the lack of obedience, oh God. And so we pray right now that we walk in full obedience to what you have told us, oh God. We pray that we walk in full obedience to your word, oh God. No matter what people may say, no matter how fearful we are, no matter how much anxiety we get, Lord God, but we pray now that, that we won't stutter, that we won't fail like uh, uh, Moses did, oh God, fail you, oh God, that we won't give you excuses, oh God, like Jonah did, oh God, but then we're gonna go forth, oh God. That we're going to go forth and we're going to declare and decree your word, oh God. That we're going to serve your people wholeheartedly, oh God. Even when we don't feel like serving. Even when we don't feel like when the threats are coming and the enemy is coming our way, oh God. And that we're having our kids are acting up, our husbands acting up, the people on the jobs acting up, oh God. When things are going our way, the applications are being denied, oh God. When, when the loans being denied, oh God, we're going to say, God, we still serve you. We're still going to be obedient to your word, oh God, because we know that at the end of the day that your promises are yea and amen, oh God. And so we thank you for that right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. We pray right now that we don't allow our weaknesses and our threats to choke hold of your word. But they will fall into good soil, that it will be planted, oh God, so that you can give the harvest and the increase, God. Father God, we just thank you now for all that you're doing, oh God. We thank you now, God, for all that you're about to do because we know that it's going to be bigger. It's going to be bigger, oh God. And we thank you for the big that's going on in our lives right now. Even though we can't see it in the natural eye, God, we know in the spiritual realm that it's bigger, oh God. And so we take hold to that, oh God. We take hold to that, oh God, to your unchanging hand. And so we thank you, God, now. In your mighty name, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. And so listen, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for coming on today. Listen, you guys, don't forget about the conference that's coming up in August. I know that's a little ways off, but get your tickets. Get your tickets. We are selling tickets all day, every day, okay? So get your tickets because I don't want it to be sold out. Come on out. Stay with us. Uh, make it a girls weekend, right? Y'all, we always have it. We're going to make it a girls trip, a girls trip. We'll have a girls trip and come and attend the conference. All the information's in the group. And you can always DM, if you have, DM me if you have any questions. Listen, God bless you. God bless you. Go out and have an amazing week. And we'll see you back on here tomorrow morning where Minister Tammy will be bringing us a word from the Lord. God bless.